wish to debate is the financial review of the Ministry of Education. Will members please turn to the Education and Science Committee's report? The question is that the report of the Education and Science Committee on the 2009-10 financial review of the Ministry of Education be noted. Mr. I call the Honourable Darren Hughes. Chairman, I, I firstly congratulate the uh, Minister previously and the Chair for the invention of having the bell not work so she could have presumably talked forever. That was a, a good trick and I think that uh, everyone, everyone should, uh, should at least try to have that uh, uh, done. So in turn, t talking to the financial review of the Ministry of Education, can I first of all, uh, with your indulgence, speak outside the period that's under review and thank uh, the Ministry of Education for the work they have done in Canterbury uh, supporting the uh, schools and early childhood services uh, in that city uh, to, uh, to get to a state where many have been able to reopen in such a small amount of time. I think all members would, uh, uh, would like to thank the people who have worked uh, in the Ministry uh, to support parents uh, and, and uh, teachers and educators uh, in that respect. So the period under review uh, is a period where the, where the government's flagship education policy was being developed. The 2009-10 financial year was when the national standards policy uh, was being worked through by the government as the answer to all the problems uh, in primary education. And I think, sir, what would be interesting to hear from the, uh, from the Minister uh, is an admission that in the end the national standards policy was never actually a policy, it was a slogan. Uh, and as the work that has gone on through in schools since the time of the, uh, the work the Ministry has done trying to implement this has come to pass, it is absolutely clear that it was a slogan about something to say on the election campaign trail uh, rather than an actual educational policy uh, that could be introduced. And we see that through all the, uh, the research that has been done, or through m much of the research that has been done, uh, which has come forward to show that the, uh, that the policy is not standing uh, on the merits that members opposite uh, campaigned on uh, at, at the last general election. And, and there's no more clear sign of that, sir, than the fact that the person at the Ministry of Education who was charged with implementing the National Standards Policy uh, has up sticks and left from that position. It's interesting, sir, that a policy that we were told was designed to assist parents and that was being demanded by parents uh, has actually been rejected by a number of parents who serve on boards of trustees in New Zealand. There are, there are 300 boards of parents uh, who are refusing to implement the National Standards Policy across the country, sir. That is a phenomenal number of boards made up of parents of children and students uh, in our country who do not believe this is the right thing educationally uh, for their school. Tomorrow's Schools was about ensuring that schools could fit a curricula, a, the delivery of the curriculum in a way that best suited their community. Uh, the curriculum that was developed under the previous government in a, a uh, non-partisan fashion uh, is a curriculum document that has received widespread support across the education uh, sector and from parents who see it uh, as being a, an innovative uh, and, uh, and courageous curriculum designed to bring out the best in all our students. We should have trust in our parents and our boards to then uh, choose a range of assessment tools uh, that are available to them in order to report back against that curriculum. Instead, sir, the National Standards Policy has been imposed uh, on parents and boards uh, and schools uh, in the country by the, uh, by the government in a way that runs totally contrary uh, to, the, uh, to the way that the curriculum was developed as a way of unleashing potential uh, in our schools. We, we see it, sir, the way, with the way that 500 boards of trustees chose not to register, they were not to lodge their charter uh, with the Ministry of Education this year. Now, these may seem uh, like small things. In fact, um, Anne Tolly described it as a petty protest. Uh, but, but what they show you, sir, is that committed parents uh, who, who care about their children's education enough to serve on boards of trustees are trying to express their frustration at the way that these standards have been imposed on schools untested, without the research and without the work done uh, on such critical issues like moderation. Now, the Minister, during the period of financial review, uh, was very gung-ho about this. Uh, she was convinced that she was right, and she said, sir, that uh, there would be no concessions, there would be no trials, the national standards would be, uh, would be enforced uh, on all uh, primary schools uh, and intermediate schools in the country. Uh, and that was during the period of financial review. This year, Sir John Key, the Prime Minister, uh, came out and said, oh, well, there have been some major teething problems with uh, the national standards, uh, and one of the reasons for that is that the first year was actually just a trial. So this, this reinforces the point, sir, that un under this Minister's leadership of the sector, education has been allowed to fall into a mess because the right hand doesn't know uh, what the left hand is doing. And that is nowhere more obvious than in the implementation uh, of the national standards. 
Uh, there is uh, another issue that I'd like to raise uh, with that, and, and respect because we're going to hear it uh, from government members, I'm sure, and that is that 20% of New Zealand children can't read and write. That is what me government members say all the time, that 20% uh, of children can't read or write uh, at, at, uh, at a level that will get them through uh, life, and that's why the national standards are, uh, are enforced. And I'd like government members opposite who say that to let us know whether that's happening in their electorate because members opposite always tell us how well schools are doing in their electorate, and yet there's this mythical electorate around the country where 20% of children can't read and write. I'm sure if members go on school visits and they see children who can't read and write, they'd be very keen to draw that to the committee's attention, but I guarantee not one member opposite will give us the name of a school in their electorate where 20% of children can't uh, read or write. So, sir, this is why we think the National Standards Policy is a mess. It detracts from the curriculum, which is an excellent document for transforming the lives of young people in our country.